You're 21 years old and you just got your first job. Excited, delighted, thrilled. You start planning for your future. You read the contract that the HR officer sends through to you. It says you're on a temporary, fixed term, zero hour contract. Still excited? The contingent workforce is the term we use to describe the move away from having long-term full-time employees and replacing them with part-time employees, casual employees and contract workers. This is only going to increase and survey results show that 60% of employers plan to replace up to one third of their permanent roles with contingent staffing. Why is this happening and what are the benefits and risks? Businesses need to be flexible and adaptable and having a workforce that can ebb and flow in size and capability is very helpful. This will help control costs and focus on key areas while not getting locked into long-term plans when the future is not clear. Employees often want flexibility as well, but there's an enormous downside to having a workforce that does not have certainty and protection. It can lead to fear, exploitation, and from an economy-wide perspective, a loss of confidence to spend because of concerns about future income. This can slow the economy and hurt businesses because sales dry up and people save for a rainy day. When we consider the benefits, first and foremost is the ability to keep costs low by not committing to having long-term staff. According to Revelian, employee engagement was found to be higher for those performing freelance work when compared to more regular employees. Adaptability and responsiveness are also benefits. The downside for organisations is that temporary workers may experience an unreceptive workplace culture who exclude them and are less likely to work closely with others to share information freely. The human resources team should ensure there are effective processes to bring people into the organisation, often called onboarding, and have risk management and governance processes in place, as these people may also end up working for competitors. For highly talented and skilled workers, the benefits are significant. Freelancing and working on temporary casual contracts can be highly rewarding and creates enormous flexibility. But for those with less marketable skills and abilities, there is little upside. Temporary contracts with no guaranteed minimum hours make it difficult to plan for things like paying rent and buying food. Yet the contracts are accepted as it's better than nothing. An important ethical question accountants must ask when helping organisations plan their HRM strategy is the impact of their policies on the employees or contractors that they hire. Is the organisation going to contribute to a more stressful society where people are exploited and unable to find job stability? Is this appropriate? And what are the strategic risks involved as well? Despite the claims that flexibility is the strategic driver of this activity, it's likely a pursuit of short-term cost savings is the real reason. Avoiding paying entitlements that are owed to employees by classifying workers as contractors is one reason for having a contingent workforce. And that's caused problems with companies like Uber and Fedora. The major strategic risks include developing a poor culture that's not focused on the vision of the organisation, as contractors focus only on delivering their task, and poor retention of company knowledge and intellectual capital, as well as an adversarial relationship between workers who feel exploited and management. To recap, freelancers, subcontractors, gig workers and consultants, along with casual and part-time employees, are all part of the contingent workforce that allows organisations to move away from having permanent full-time staff. The greater flexibility this offers to both workers and employers needs to be weighed carefully against the pressure and risk it places on individuals who no longer have reliable sources of income, as well as the strategic risk of focusing too heavily on cost control and not enough on culture and achieving the long-term goals and objectives of the organisation.